Preservation Alaska has been announcing the annual 10 most endangered historic properties for 32 years. While there are many buildings around the state that could be considered endangered, those on this list are considered the most endangered. This list is meant to bring attention to the endangered properties around the state. If we do not save our historic properties, we stand to lose a very valuable part of our history. Regret only goes one way. The preservation of historic buildings is a one-way street. There is no chance to renovate or to save a historic site once it's gone. And we can never be certain what will be valued at, in the future. This reality brings to light the importance of locating and saving buildings of historic significance because once a piece of history is destroyed, it is lost forever. Steamer SS Nanana is located in Fairbanks. The Steamer Nanana is a five deck wooden hauled Western river style steamer stern wheeler packet built from a clear vertical grain kiln dried fur. The ship is a blend of steam, wood, and paddle wheel technology that is 237 feet long and weighs a total of 1,128 tons. The steamer was commissioned and built in 1932 by the Alaska Railroad. She was prefabricated in Seattle, assembled in Nanana, launched into service in 1933, and run by the Alaska Railroad. The original design contained 24 berths, a dining salon, a smoking room, an observation room, a kitchen, a bakery, and men's and women's bathrooms, along with passengers and officers' rooms with porcelain sinks and electric lights. She's located in Pioneer Park in Fairbanks. Years of neglect and deferred maintenance have brought the SS Nana, a beautiful piece of Alaskan history, to deplorable conditions. In April 2018, the Fairbanks North Star Bureau blocked all entrances to the stern wheeler and closed off this beloved historic landmark to the public due to safety concerns. Dedicated community members organized into the nonprofit Friends of SS Nanana and had the vessel inspected by the principal naval architect of Columbia Sentinel Engineers from Seattle during June of 2019. A report of needed repairs was generated for the group. The National Park Service Alaska Interior Region is offering technical assistance for the repairs and restoration of the vessels. Without substantial fundraising, advocacy, and a close partnership agreement with the Bureau, we will lose the SS Nanana, a historic stern wheeler that is the last of its kind. In 21, 2021, the Fairbanks North Star Bureau, in response to strong community support, committed maintenance funds for work on the, on the boat. They hired a design firm with historic preservation consultant to prepare bid documents for repairs to the vessel. Work, work will start with a cargo deck. They will be seeking further funds for interior and exterior restoration works. In 2022, the activities that underway to save the property, the Fairbanks North Star Bureau adopted the cargo deck for repairs in the CIP phase one repairs. Phase two is projected out past 2030 for the remainder of the boat. Bids for the phase one repairs recently came in over budget by over 900,000. And this puts phase one in limbo at this time. The friends of the SS Nanana continue to raise funds for repairs of the SS Nanana and are working with the Fairbanks North Star Bureau to successfully restore the vessel. The vessel is an Alaska state landmark and if you're interested in making donations, you can do so from their website. The Accession Church of Our Lord Chapel at Carlick on Kodiak Island. The extension of our Lord Orthodox Church was constructed in 1888 and is believed to the Second Orthodox Church in Karlik, the first Russian post on the western side of Kodiak Island. The church was situated inland from the cliff's edge high above the mouth of the Karlik River in Shelikov Strait. In August 2021, the church was lifted from its foundation and moved about 80 feet inland for a temporary placement. Although the church does not currently have a resident priest, a visiting priest conducted services throughout the year prior to the move to its temporary location. Early photos illustrate the church built above the original village. However, in 1978, the village nearly washed away during a winter storm that reshaped the mouth of the Carlick River, collapsed the bridge, and destroyed the local fuel supply. Although this iconic Orthodox church has been moved away from the bluff from its original site, Coastal erosion in an age of climate change shows no sign of letting up. A permanent site is necessary to ensure long-term preservation and continued use of the church in Carlick. Architectural historian Allison Hoagland in her book, Buildings of Alaska, 
noted that the Carlick Church is the oldest extant Russian Orthodox Church in Alaska, as well as being one of the most professionally designed. The church's location high above the Carlick River in Shelikov Strait makes it one of the most dramatic settings for historic building in Alaska. The architectural design is attributed to Charles Smith Hirsch and is a model for a small church embodying eclectic features of mainstream Russian Orthodox rural church design. While the materials were purchased by the Alaska Packers Company and the Carlick Packing Company at the request of the local Alaska Native Chief Melody, who led the effort to have a church built in the community of Carlick. Negotiations are currently underway to find a permanent location upriver and closer to the contemporary village where it will retain the same east-west orientation, as well as serve as a beacon above the Carlick River for the community and fishermen returning home as it has for 135 years. The new location under consideration will be approximately five acres in size to accommodate not only the church, but also a new cemetery for graves that will be needed to be relocated um, as the cliff continues to erode and expose human remains in the old cemetery. Shetna Emporium is located in Shetna, Alaska. The building has a long history of being an anchor to the community, including a hotel, bar, retail store, and power heating source for the community. Originally, it had a Copper River and Northwest Railroad Sternwheelers boiler used to heat the building with mines to other buildings. Currently, the building is uninhabitable and the foundation wood posts are collapsing. The lots behind the buildings are wetlands. The L4 beside the building is vacant. The art gallery building and hotel buildings have been restored and are stable. Chutna is a vital link to the St. Elias National Park and a historic location of interior coastal indigenous connections. When the railroad was operating, Chutna was a junction connecting the stagecoach and later road to the interior and Fairbanks. The building foundation posts have failed in many locations. The side of the building is bulging above the second floor ceiling joists on one side. Windows are broken. The metal roof is okay, but the access cover are open for some time, resulting in water damage to the second floor and ceilings below. The basement is, is dirt and subject to flooding, which has caused many of the posts supporting the building to fail. The building is in critical condition, unsafe to be in, and needs to be quickly stabilized to avoid further damage that might make it impossible to salvage. The building has been an anchor in the past and the most substantial remaining historical building in, in Chitna. Short term, the goal is to save the building from further damage and decay. Longer term, contact has been made with the local tribal association with a proposal to, to restore the building to use in the summer as a museum, gift shop, and miscellaneous supplies for tourists and dip net fishing visitors. In the winter, the building would be used as a co-working community hall and workshop to help local residents create art and items for summertime sale and operate an incubator and working space for the community. There is a fiber optic cables installed in town and a drop at the building. Eldred Rock Lighthouse is near Haines in Southeast Alaska. Eldred Rock Lighthouse sits on a very small island located approximately 17 miles south of the town of Haines. The island is the last southernmost in a string of islands extending south from the Haines Peninsula. Built in 1905, Eldred Rock Lighthouse is the oldest original lighthouse in Alaska and the only remaining optical frame lighthouse of those built between 1902 and 1905. It is the only station not rebuilt. It was established because of the many shipwrecks nearby, especially during the 1898 gold rush when Lynn Canal was in heavy use. Eldred Rock Lighthouse has been unmanned for over 45 years, and as a result, the buildings have fallen into disrepair and are considered endangered. The primary reasons for this state of repair are due to environmental and logistical challenges and no agency funding to maintain the lighthouse. The extreme weather and environmental conditions greatly contribute to the rate of de deterioration. Elder Rock Lighthouse, along with three outbuildings and a helicopter pad, sits on a 2.2 acre island 17 miles south of Haines, Alaska, and is subjected to the extreme weather of Northern Lynn Canal. The lighthouse was automated in 1973, leaving it empty, unconditioned, and maintained, unmaintained for 50 years. The Elder Rock Lighthouse Preservation Association has a lease agreement with the U.S. Coast Guard, who owns the, the property, for the ability to manage, repair, and use the buildings. The association is now in its third summer of remediation the, of the asbestos and lead paint out of the buildings. Water intrusion continues to wreak havoc on the lighthouse, with precipitation coming in through the roof, the lantern room, and into the exterior walls of the concrete first floor that has had significant spalling after years of freezing thawed cycles. 
the association contracted, contracted a, a, a concrete repair crew last summer, but after $54,000 of time and materials, they were only able to complete repair of a portion of the south side. Eldred Rock Lighthouse was the last Alaskan lighthouse to be built in 1905, but is now the oldest original lighthouse in the state due to its unique design that combined the keeper quarters with a light structure and compressed air foghorn. While other lighthouses were rebuilt into solid concrete structures and the keeper quarters destroyed, Eldred Rock retains its original design thanks to the solid concrete first floor. The wooden second floor keeper quarters, the attic and the spiral staircase leading to the lantern room are all original wood. The Elder Rock Lighthouse was listed on the National Registry in 1975 and is the, in the most viewed lighthouse in the state. The Alaska Marine Highway System ferries, cruise ships, cargo vessels, and recreational boaters all transit near the lighthouse, not to mention that it's in the flight path for airplanes going to and from Juneau to Skagway or Haines. The association has achieved approximately 65% of their remediation efforts in the last three summers, abating asbestos and removing or encapsulating lead paint. These areas have been inspected and air sampled by an environmental engineer, resulting in four of the five bedrooms livable for work, for work crews. Once the remediation is complete, the U.S. Coast Guard will address the contaminated soil, diesel and lead that is present on the island. Short-term goals, once the hazardous material are gone and the building safe, are to begin opening the lighthouse for longer stays with volunteers, establishing and implement, implementing a detailed maintenance plan and begin giving tours on a charter basis. Long-term goals are for the association to apply for ownership of the lighthouse under the National Historic Lighthouse Preservation Act of 2000. Pilgrim Hot Springs is located 60 miles north of Nome. Pilgrim Hot Springs is located on a 320-acre tract of land that was originally surveyed as a homestead in the early 1900s. The property is accessible during three or four months of the year via the Pilgrim Hot Springs Access Road, a seven-mile frontier road built in the early 1980s, which connects the property to the Nome Taylor Highway. A subarctic oasis located in remote north northwestern Alaska Pilgrim Hot Springs is nestled between the Hannah and Chicken's Hill and the Kigliak Mountain Range. The property is a lush tree oasis with an abundant geothermal resource. Pilgrim boasts, not, boasts hot bathing pools, warm fertile soil, and a unique history, including pre-contact utilization by the indigenous population, Alaska gold rush history, railroads and dog sled trails, early aviation and mil military use, its time used as a Catholic mission and orphanage for the victims of the 1918-1919 flu pandemic, agriculture use, as well as its most recent use as a recreation destination and tourist attraction. Pilgrim Hot Springs was used as an orphanage by the Catholic Jesuit diocese from 1918 to 1941. It was used during World War II as a place for soldiers rest and relaxation the military presence significantly increased as a result of the U.S. USSR Lend Lease Program. Once the 19, since the 1950s, it was has enjoyed primarily for recreational use by the people of the region and visitors to know. All of the buildings in the immediate vicinity of the mission were constructed between 1910 and 1930. The church and the nuns' quarters are still structurally stable and retain most of their original architectural attributes, though they have been diminished through the weathering and some vandalism. Other structures at the mission have not fared as well. Nearly all presents present some level of instability and some have collapsed, such as the machine shop. Because of the mission's history and its historical and personal importance to local residents, it is in, imperative that a baseline be established to determine what efforts need to be undertaken to stabilize and preserve the structures. Pilgrim Hot Springs is an important destination for visitors to Nome, and many people travel there to visit the mission and soak in the hot waters. Stabilization of the buildings and the development of the interpretive signage would add greatly to that experience and would preserve the ambience and history of this important place in Alaska histories. The next steps for preservation are focused on immediate stabilization and repairs, historic preservation planning as part of the master planning effort, and the continuous search for funding opportunities to support full restoration of the buildings, including modern amenities to support activities at the property, museum, educational displays, cafe and gift shop, staff housing, storage, guest housing, youth programs, workforce development, and more. 
Pine Air Hall is located in Ketchikan. Pine Air Hall is a two-story wood frame building on post foundations constructed over bedrock. The building footprint is approximately 1,786 square feet. It has a steep modified hip roof with an unfinished attic. The building has been altered on all four elevations and in, and in its interior. Modifications were made to its front street facade in its early years and continue to be made to, vis to visible facades along Pioneer Way. It was built on a prominent site overlooking the waterfront and its 50-foot flagpole was a beacon for early seafarers coming to Ketchikan. As the town grew rapidly in the years that followed, many now historic buildings began to surround Pioneer Hall. By the late 1920s, the commanding view earlier enjoyed by the Pioneer Hall was eclipsed by the larger buildings, including the Gilmore Hotel and City Hall. The building is situated on historic Pioneer Way, which is a stairway pedestrian alley connecting Front Street to Main and Grant Streets. The Pioneer Hall is an iconic Ketchikan landmark from the community's earliest days. It was the first customs house located in Ketchikan from 1900 to 1907, and has been a prominent landmark in the community since 1900. In 1922, it began a new life of serving the Pioneers of Alaska, Igloo Number 16 and Igloo 7. The Pioneers have continued to meet in this building over the ensuing nearly 100 years and continue to carry out many civic activities. This is the downtown historic districts and the city of Ketchikan's oldest building and a contributing building to the district's National Register of Historic Places designation. While the building has been altered over the years, the Pioneer Hall is individually eligible for the National Register by virtue of its place in Ketchikan's history. The building needs considerable rehabilitation to meet health and safety standards that would enable the pioneers to continue to use the property. The building needs immediate attention to its foundation and structural deficiencies, as well as extensive upgrades to its mechanical and electrical systems. There are numerous code issues that render the building unsafe to its members and visitors, and that, if corrected, would enable older members to visit the building and remain active in the organization for a longer period. The building's deficiencies have been enumerated in the draft report of the historic building assessment. Restoration of the building would return many of its double hung windows, channel siding, and architectural detailing to the building. Fort William H. Seward Hospital is located in Haines. The Fort Seward Hospital building is one of the anchor buildings within the fort. At 10,000 square feet, this building is key to the character of Fort Seward. The hospital building was built between 1902 and 1904. The style of architecture is representative of the popular neoclassical or federalist style of the era, which is reminiscent of Greek classical architecture featuring clean lines, cornices, and column porches. The hospital building is one of the largest buildings from the original fort. It has four stories, including a large basement and attic. Established in 1903, Fort William H. Seward, or Fort Seward, served as a U.S. military post until 1947 when it was abandoned sold to a group of World War II veterans and became Port Chilkoot. The area be became a National Historic Landmark in 1978 and was renamed Fort William H. Seward. The military buildings frame a central parade ground with the lieutenant's houses on the top row. The captain's housing on the north side, the soldier's barracks on the lower side, and the hospital building completes the frame on the south side of the parade grounds. The military hospital was equipped and staffed um, to perform routine checkups as well as surgeries. It served not only the men stationed at Fort Seward, but also the entire community of Haines as the only hospital in town for several years. For over 60 years, the hospital building was home to the renowned Alaska Indian Arts, or AIA, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the preservation and continuation of traditional native craft and culture of the tribes of the Pacific Northwest Coast. They trained artists in clinket art and produced totem poles, masks, and other artworks, some of which are featured in the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C., the Burke Museum in Seattle, and the Alaska Native Heritage Center in Anchorage, as well as locations along the Northwest Coast. The hospital building suffers from decades of severe maintenance. However, it was open and usable until the winter of 2019. That year, during particularly harsh freeze, the heating system of the large building went out and most pipes in the building froze and burst. The building was left inoperable and now in disrepair. Shingles and chimneys are broken, allowing water to leak inside, damaging the structure. Moss is growing on the roof, which is leading to more impairment up to the roof tiles. 
by allowing moisture to settle and degrade the shingles. The plumbing and the heating systems need to be completely replaced. Interior sheet rock is loose and falling apart. Due to the hospital building's large size, it has been difficult and costly for the owner to repair. It is one of the largest buildings in Haines. As such, it has great potential as a community asset and can serve as home to an historical interpretation center, a community center, an art school, a business hub, a senior activity center, or any of a number of other roles. These potential uses would require significant eventual investment, but the immediate need is for the building to be repaired and reserved. The Bishop Rogue Chapel is located in Arctic Village. The log Bishop Rogue Chapel in Arctic Village is an iconic structure renowned not only in the sub-Arctic region bordering the East Fork of the Channel R, but indeed across the state of Alaska. Built by local villagers during the post-World War II era, this extraordinary and unique chapel is the third iteration of a structure that was first created by one of the founding fathers of the village, Reverend Albert Tripp, at the start of the 20th century. For decades, the chapel, situated in the center of the village, served as a focus of social and communal activity. It was and is an homage to Gwinnett's identity. The church has been renovated over the years since it ceased to be used actively in the 1960s, uh, most recently in 2002 to 2005. Given its rele relevance and significance to the Gwich'in culture and indeed to the history and her heritage of Alaska as a whole. However, even given the harsh conditions of the region compounded by a changing climate, a recent condition survey was conducted in 2019 as determined that after two decades, the structure is again endangered and in need of additional maintenance. Unless a series of repairs are undertaken soon, the building could be lost, this time possibly for good. In the past several years, local villagers have done their best to maintain the property. It is the number one tourist attraction in the village and has been used as a centerpiece of communal celebration and pride since the day it was deconsecrated by Bishop McDonald in 2004. As conditions have degraded in recent years, a key group of concerned residents has sought to protect the items that once were housed in the chapel, such as the historic altar cloth and other important objects. Pews have also been removed. There was no doubt in the early 2000s and throughout the years that followed that renovation project was a success. And yet nearly two decades since the initiative was completed, it is apparent that it is now time again to address some needed repairs and maintenance for concerns. To be sure, natural materials like logs are by definition difficult to protect, especially in a climate like that of the subarctic. Nonetheless, the main shell of the chapel has largely held and the most part of the repairs and renovation carried out 20 years ago clearly served to preserve the building from disappearing altogether. Bristol Bay Boats located in Naknap. This historic collection of 14 wooden Bristol Bay fishing boats that demonstrates the evolution from the days of the sale that began in the 1880s to the first power boats legally allowed to fish the waters of Bristol Bay in 1951. This unique collection features rare and one-of-a-kind boats that range from early 1900 sailboats to conversions, which are sailboats that have been converted to host gas-powered engines and retrofitted with the cabins to replace the ridge pole tents formerly constructed with oil skins and wooden oars. The conversions range from those with the first small enclosed cabins and the later version with stand-up cabins. The collection also features several boats built by Bryant, which are some of the first wooden power boats designed and built specifically for their fishery. The collection also includes some of the last models of wooden boats designed and built by American Commercial that were made in the late 1970s before wood was replaced with other construction materials. A keystone in the collection is the fully restored 1932 sailboat Libby's Kogayak No. 5, which is fully restored with sails and all the rigging's anchor and a net. Historically, there was a vi village site named Kogayak uh, located right by the Libby Cannery that was built on the, the Quijack River. In 1951, 86 boats were motorized while 631 were still powered with sails. Within two years in 1953, 1,108 boats were motorized and only 62 boats in the fleet that remained were double ender sailboats. The historic wooden boat collection of the Bristol Bay Historical Society represents an important part of fishery management in Alaska and remains an icon of the history, culture, and economy of Bristol Bay. These boats must be preserved, maintained, and displayed to protect the maritime cultural resources of Bristol Bay. 
The historic collection of Bristol Bay fishing boats are all constructed with wood. In order to preserve and maintain them, they must be stored under cover and out of the elements. A number of the boats are stored under cover in warehouses, but others are stored outside in the elements, and thus are subject to, to deterioration that comes with exposure to wind, rain, and snow. The Bristol Bay Historical Society is dedicated to preserving and sharing the history, culture, and values of Bristol Bay. The Bristol Bay Historical Society currently owns and operates a museum facility located in the historic A.R. Davy Mercantile Building in Naknek. The current exhibition space available in the historic building is, however, limited, and the surrounding property needs to be developed to include a warehouse facility large enough to house the society's extensive historic wooden boat collection. Packers Association Diamond Oak Cannery, located in South Naknek, that was slated to be torn down. The earliest structures in this cannery campus were built in 1901, and this structure is one of the last relics of the historic sites that survived a devastating fire in 1985. All warehouse building materials have been relocated to Naknek and plans to resemble the building to serve as a new boathouse storage facility are underway. Construction of this facility will enable the society to centralize the boat collection and get the boats that are currently stored outside and subject to deterioration outside of the elements to finally be stored safely under cover. The Hayu Stamp Mill is located outside of Fairbanks. The Hayu Stamp Mill pro property is a historic property approximately 20 miles northeast of Fairbanks, Alaska. Situated in the hills and creeks where many other mines also thrived, the stamp mill remains a testament of historic underground mining in interior Alaska. On the main property is the stamp mill, a large red building built in the hillside for purposes of utilizing gravity in the milling process. There remains two Joshua Handy five stamp batteries, most of the diesel engine and generator. The jaw crusher still resides in the uppermost part of the mill. Although the property has degraded significantly and parts have fallen prey to vandalism, it is still one of the best and only surviving examples of early underground mining and milling in interior Alaska. The gold deposit that the Hayu Mill building is situated near was known as early as 1912, and in one short year, an adit had been driven 450 feet. In 1914, the mine was in full production, and a five-stamp battery was moved from nearby Chatham Creek to process the precious ore. The mill building was built and added onto throughout the years to accommodate its two five-stamp batteries, jaw crusher, diesel engine, generator, a sauna, coal bunker, and assaying room. The mine operated until World War II, never going back into full production. The mill was last used in the early 1960s to process samples. The mine was originally owned and operated by the Crates and Feldman. It was sold in the 1920s. Many prominent Fairbanks owned stock in the mine. The high stamp mill property is situated relatively out of the way. However, in recent years, the Kinross Fort Knox project's planned expansions loom dangerously close to the historic mine. Although it is the biggest threat, Fort Knox is not the only danger to Hayu. Since it's closed, vandalism has been rampant at the mine. There is no longer any glass in any of the historic buildings. Spray paint, litter, and other vandalism has taken place. The diesel engine has been somewhat dismantled over the years, and the generator in the mill has been cut off, cut open for most, some of its copper to be sold for scrap. In shape these days, the Hayu stamp mill is not too far gone to be saved. Those properties on this list are eligible for a small matching grant in the amount of $2,500. And we'd like to, to thank our sponsors for the support of the grant program. They make this grant possible each year. So we thank the, the architecture, the construction, the engineering firms, um, and all, all of the people that are willing to support this program. We are very grateful for their, their support. From landmarks and icons to neighborhoods and homes, share and celebrate the places that you are most important to you. And we thank you from Preservation Alaska for the support of our program. Thank you.